You cannot have fun in an ED is what I'm hearing a lot. I don't agree. Today I'm going to show you how I stunt in my EV, and of course this is not an instructional guide. Consider this more as a physics lesson about precision driving. Some of this applies to combustion engine cars as well, so I will be focusing on EVs. A fundamental truth is that driving a car requires coordination and control over all forces. When it comes to stunting, this is even more critical. I'm going to break down everything I tried to control to perform stunts in an EV on dry asphalt. And I will also show you how I do three stunts. First things first, I never do this on public roads. To stunt, you have to have a closed and secure environment where you cannot hurt anyone else or yourself. And depending on the ground clearance of your car, you usually need an even surface to stunt on. If you are in a car with high ground clearance, you can do a lot on a relatively bumpy surface. But in the Tesla Model 3, I need a pretty even surface to make sure I reduce the risk of hitting the rims against any obstacles. Our senses, reaction time and level of experience play a huge role in defining whether or not we can safely stand in any type of car. More often than not, reaction time and experience level go hand in hand. So of course, it helps if you come from a motorsport background or have a background in a sport that demands high reaction times. Because you predict an outcome, prepare for it and act in advance. Three key senses come into play here. Sight. Your eyes have the most important role to play. 85% of that what you do in a car is down to what you see. So you go where you look. There's an order to this. First you think of where you want to go, which means your thoughts guide your eyes. Then you react to what your eyes see, which means your eyes guide your motor functions. Then you steer in the direction you need to head in, which means your body guides the car. Feeling. This is an almost subconscious response, which is transmitted via your seat and your steering. When you're driving on the limit, you feel the loss of grip or resistance. Before you see that your car isn't moving in the direction you want it to move in, when your steering feels too light, you automatically realize you have lost grip and thus nearly lost control of the car. When you feel more resistance via the steering wheel, you know there is more grip and you have more control of the car. Hearing. In dry conditions, this helps you to understand what's going on with your car, especially with your tires. In my case, as a professional stunt driver, the screams of my passengers are a good thing. But that's not the noise we are meant to be keeping our ears open for. The louder and longer the tires screech, the closer you are to or above the limit. Of course, you should know your car, your tires and the brakes and the condition they are in. The newer and more reliable the machine and the tires, the easier it is to be precise in it and predict tire wear. Plus the car's brake lines, pads and discs need to be in the best condition possible to avoid nasty surprises. The surface plays a big role in defining grip level. So dry asphalt, for example, is considered 100% grip. When it's wet, it can go down to 50%. And when sand is on the road, the grip level can go down by up to 75%. The higher the grip level, the more speed you need to make a stunt happen, which increases the risk. So in a controlled environment, having either water or sand on the surface means you need less kinetic energy to perform certain types of stunts. And with less grip, you have less wear out, which means you use less tires and resources. Another important factor is whether you are standing on asphalt or concrete. On asphalt you end up laying down rubber on the surface, which increases the grip. Now concrete has even higher levels of grip than dry asphalt. But concrete shreds more rubber from the tire, which makes it wear out faster. On the plus side you have a more consistent grip level because you don't alter the surface by laying down rubber on it. So as long as the tires are good, it's easier to judge the grip level. Tires are equally important. Tire type, compound, size, air pressure, all have an impact on the grip.
It makes a difference if you are using summer or winter tires. Winter tires do have a softer compound and heat up quicker. But the temperature range at which they are best is up to 7 degrees Celsius. When you try to stunt with them, irrespective of outside temperature, they heat up and wear out quicker, which isn't ideal for stunts. So I always use brand new summer tires as specified for my car by the manufacturer. These have a harder compound, but I influence the grip by inflating the tire and decreasing the area of the contact patch to the surface, thus reducing resistance. The fact is, the more power your car has, the easier it is to push it beyond the limits. In my case, 512 PS is a game changer. Weight transfer or load change moments also matter. If you accelerate, for example, or decelerate, it has an impact. On dry asphalt, the effect of load change is felt at speeds above 70 km per hour. Especially so in the case of an EV with regenerative braking, where going off the accelerator leads to a major load change moment, without needing to press a brake or downshift through gears. The type of drivetrain influences the way you start. So whether you have a front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive car matters. But in this case we will stick to what happens in rear-wheel drive cars, since that's the mode I use in the Model 3 performance. In a rear-wheel drive car on dry asphalt, consistent hard acceleration into a corner leads to oversteering. So if you have enough power, you can drift quite easily with just the accelerator. And above 70 km per hour, combining deceleration and steering also leads to the car's tail stepping out. But there's another important factor. Whether the car is allowing you to switch off safety modes like ESC is key to make any stunts happen. A drift is when the car's tail comes out. True drifts are only possible in rear-wheel drive cars, which is the mode I use in the Model 3 performance. To pull off a drift, first you get the car's rear wheels to spin, either by using a lot of power or with the help of low grip levels. Once the rear wheels spin, the car's tail will start to step out, and it has a tendency to want to come all the way around. To prevent this from happening, you counter steer, or steer in the same direction that the tail is moving in, thus catching and holding the drift. A donut is a very controlled drift with very slow speed, where the car's nose is revolving around a fixed point. In the case of a donut, you don't need to counter steer as much because you do want the car's tail to very nearly come all the way around. But the key to making the donut possible is synchronizing your eyes and your steering and keeping the rear tires spinning. So look at the point around which you want to revolve and match your steering input to continuously meet this target. And the tightest parallel parking is the quickest way into a parking spot, but the slowest way out. In the case of this 180 degree tightest parallel parking move, you would typically need to use a handbrake, since it helps you be more precise. In a combustion engine car with a manual transmission, you need to define your speed, clutch point, steering point, handbrake point and final foot brake point. In the Model 3, I don't have a clutch or handbrake, but I do have the rear wheel drive option to make a drift parking maneuver possible. But it's tricky, because to drift you need to accelerate, but to park you need to brake. So precision in terms of the angle of approach and timing becomes crucial. Manually, Divide your final parking slot into three equal parts. You want the front of the car to make it into the first third of the slot. That's your only goal. If you are precise with your angle of approach and catch the front, the rest of the car will follow precisely too. Once you're in, brake to make sure you don't overshoot your goal. Easier said than done, but praxis makes perfect. So I hope this video gave you a good insight into stunts and especially stunt driving in an EV. Of course, this is not an instructional video, so it's just that you know that there is science behind stunt driving. And of course, if you like this video, subscribe to DWRF.